Russia has invaded Ukraine. Global supply chain issues severely impact the distribution of goods on an international scale. The coronavirus pandemic has pushed many around the world into economic hardship. As we said before, we're in a period of profound regime change. The need for a sustainable growth model, the negative consequences of income inequality caused by years of quantitative easing, and the vulnerability of global supply chains exposed by first the pandemic and then the war in Ukraine have led to a focus on decarbonisation, deglobalisation and a much higher level of government intervention. Well, the conflict in Ukraine and the sanctions on Russia have led to another surge in the cost of oil and gas. The US has taken a step in banning sort of Russian fuel imports. Other countries have taken sort of similar measures. But what does this mean for portfolios? Firstly, we expect ongoing disruption across a broad range of commodities, which will be a source of inflationary pressure. At the same time, events in Ukraine have forced Europe to reconsider its energy security. And of course, net zero targets continue to be a priority, as well as the energy transition. And this results in countervailing trends within commodity markets. We actually think there is a case both for commodity-related investments as an inflation hedge, and also for those investments focused on the energy transition, where the strategic importance of this trend has only been emphasised by the geopolitical situation. The Bank of England has raised interest rates uh, from 0.25% to 0.5%. Now the business secretary is said to have put in a formal request to the Treasury asking for help for the industries worst affected by the surging energy prices. Secondly, over the last 10 or even 20 years, we've seen a combination of tight fiscal policy and loose monetary policy. And that is very much going into reverse. On the one hand, governments have become a lot more interventionist on the fiscal side, but also central banks are now moving to raise rates to quell inflation. And this is a major shift in the policy environment. Rising rates are important for markets because essentially it means that the bird in the hand is starting to be worth something. And this poses a speed limit to returns. Two rate hikes from the Fed. Is that a risk to bond investors and a risk, maybe a risk that points to a higher dollar? Faced with the prospect of more active central banks, we've seen a very aggressive sell-off across all fixed income markets and a level of interest rate volatility that really hadn't been witnessed since the 1970s. At this point, we think valuations have improved in fixed income markets and I would argue that the traffic light is moving from red to amber. However, there is still a tug of war between the risk of growth disappointment, which is obviously helpful to government bonds in particular, and also the risk of persistent inflation. As investors became more accustomed to the situation in Ukraine, we saw a bounce in equity markets from oversold conditions. But for the year, we still think that equities will be caught between the cross currents of rising commodity prices and rising interest rates, leading to a more muted return outlook compared to 2021. Under the surface of the market, however, we continue to see substantial opportunities. Value-oriented investments, for example, are less exposed to rising rates, and we still think there is more to go for in that trend. And we still think there's a role for thematic opportunities that take advantage of the disruption we're witnessing across economies and markets. In short, think about what you did in your portfolio over the last 10 years and do the opposite. It's time to take a forward-looking approach.